I'm going to start off just asking you your thoughts. So you listened to my talk with Terry Real and uh, the conversation there, and I'm interested where it took you. Yeah, of course. It is interesting to listen to you, you know, in that light where you're, you've got, I can hear you thinking, okay, I'm talking to millions or, you know, thousands of people in contrast to you and I having okay. a cup of coffee or whatever. And the way you talk there and that's why we're doing this. Is and that's why we're coffee? doing it. Yes. Yes. And, you know, knowing more details about uh, both of our families and marriages and talking to kids and things like that. And so here's Terry and he was a guy I didn't know. And, and, um, but I, I was going to ask you, cause I kind of thought that some of his blockbuster statements about, you know, for example, well, well, Kevin, try this on for size. Instead of saying, you know, don't talk to me that way. Say, honey, uh, it really, you know, gosh, I, I know I just feel this way. I mean, you told that story about you in the car and Terry said that to you 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think Terry or Terry real put it together well, mm -hmm. and in a, in a very, but on one hand, I didn't think there was blockbuster new information, but like everything else that we talk about in personal development all the time is there's, there's not a whole lot of new things, but it is in what context and how do you think about it? And, and, um, so that was one of the thoughts that I had was, you know, why, why do you think Terry has Terry real has struck a nerve, you know, because his, like his feeling exercise, you know, joy, peace, love. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, again, You've known for a long time. You said, I'm not in touch with my feelings. I don't know. So how, what is it about us that has made you think that this has really struck a, struck a chord with you or with people? Well, that's a great question because it would be, I mean, how many times have we read a book, been exposed to a message and uh, time goes on and a decade later we hear it again and Boom. It hits. I mean, yeah. my gosh, it's the, it's the Bible. I mean, how many times have you well, read sure. the Bible, gone in there and today Psalm, whatever hits you, you've read it a hundred times and hit, you know, new time of life. I think sure. that's, uh, I think that's relevant. So maybe it hit me at a time. Well, it did at a time when I'm doing more self introspection and trying to be more self. What about culturally? Why, why, why is it hitting her culturally I, yeah, and all yeah, the celebrities? Culturally he's the celebrities are saying, you know, is, is he saying something that and I, I, well, I got a bone to pick with you because you, in your intro, you said, yeah, even Esther Perel. Yeah. And I'm like, Kevin, two years ago, I heard her in an interview and I'm like, you have got to, <laughs> to listen to this. Yeah. And because it struck a chord with me, like, gosh, yeah, why won't people just be honest, just be with their own heart. Right. Just. And, and well, that, you know, she came out of the honesty of the Holocaust of, you know, yeah. rip everything away. And, and so, so now we're just chewing on these ideas. Why? And well, I mean, you to be honest with their own heart. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm not, I mean, that's part of what I, it's part of my own part of your pathology story is, and story. is, is the, and why I have a guy like Terry real on, I didn't have him on, uh, I had him on because I wanted to talk to him. I, I thought it, was funny. it really was your personal counseling. Session. It was my personal counseling session. It's going to continue. I think I'm going to start working with one of his, his counselors. And it, it is my, you know, here I am on the self-helpful podcast and, and have so much awareness. And yet I have been habitually unaware of my own feelings. I have, I am not, I'm somebody, I mean, gosh, you've been my friend when we talk about stuff and I think you would say I'm pretty open. I'm not super private, but do I talk about my feelings as of late? Yes. But mm -hmm. historically no. And that has, you know, hurt relationships. And so, and with, by the way, I, I think you did do a really good job on that and your, and I'm sure people have testified to you about that, that on the show, you are open, you are seeking you are <laughs> they, they do i get good responses 
from people, but I think that there are some people who find it a little offsetting. They're used to listening to a podcast host who has arrived Who's and is telling you what to do, telling you what yeah. to do. And with me going, dude, I have no idea. Teach me. I, I think some find it a Somebody little out there like, come on, I'm listening to you to find out the answers. <laughs> yeah. We're just, well, <laughs> I'm bringing people on to help. Let Banging them, around in the dark with them. me. <laughs> <laughs> I have my areas that I, I will, I feel, I feel a lot more certain on our, you know, functional Friday and talking about health and wellness and, uh, that area than this on emotions. I mean, this is a, yeah, this is a, a journey, but his, I do think that he writes a good story. So as you read his book, he does a lot of showcasing of his interactions with patients mm -hmm. that you're reading and go, Holy smokes. Has he been watching me on video or reading mm -hmm. my notes? I think other people do that, but I think he does a good job. So just my, a, Sure. A, a little offering skillful, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got a lot of psychologists, maybe there's other ones that are, you know, as, as good as he is. I think he does a better job in the literal art of writing it in a way that resonates. So yeah. that's, I think that's one that has gotten a lot of people interested, but his, you know, that title of, um, of, you know, getting rid of the, the you and me and becoming more us as the book is titled, it did resonate that as I looked at that and thought, man, I am very, I am such an individualistic person. And, you know, he talks about an individualistic culture, but I tend to feel, I mean, you, you know, me, I, I, I feel like I'm maybe a little further on that spectrum than the norm of being very individualistic of looking at those people, you know, and I'm not very us. I mean, I'm not a team player. I'm not very good at that. I've struggled that with that with you. You know, I just kind of take my thing and I go run off and six months later I'll say, oh, hey, these things happen. Yeah. Well, and so I'm concerned about that for my relationships, especially my most intimate ones. I resonated strongly with that. And I will refer us back to, I think, even very recent podcasts where, where you and I, I think we can recognize that we will speak at the 50,000 foot theoretical view, but you, you still got to bring it down to, okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to go eat this. Or I'm going to say these words to myself or my wife or my kid. And, mm -hmm. and in the past we have said, okay, look, the foundation is relationship. Mm -hmm. the, the, the usness, even within you is a me, myself, and I, there's a relationship between mind or brain, mind, soul what we call the mind body connection that and in this context between me and you i would say gosh yeah i i have a faith in a god that also says there is a trinitarian relationship upon which all of creation is based even god himself and that's where i think terry is right of the usness that we are missing in the last decades, maybe even centuries of the American, um, there's the good side and the bad side, right? The rugged individualism. That's the phrase from history of, I can pull myself up by my bootstraps. This is the American dream, the American story. If you give me a little bit of an opportunity, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go. And there's, that's been my language. Well, and there's That's, a good side to that. Like if I want something done, I can call you and say, Hey man, can you chop a tree down? And you'll just say, okay, I don't want to, but I'm just going to grab the chains on and do it. Like we did for Todd. And when there's, you know, a ditch to dig and a thing to do and, and you're good at, okay, let's just do it. And that gets paid. Well, that gets hired. Well, but it gets cultural applause. That's right. No doubt. Cultural strokes. Yeah. And, and you're right. And that's where, uh, you know, Terry and says, okay, but it, what's the bad side of that? Like everything has a bad side. If we don't have any rugged individuals, we got no leadership. We got no whatever, but now we maybe have too much of that. What he called patriarchal, I think was his word. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I would, I would debate with him on that choice of the word because then the opposite or would be matriarchal or some other yeah. archical right yeah. there has to be some kind of formation and and i'm not saying yeah we all need to you know be men and misogynistic and thumb down on women and whatever else uh, that it has been done very poorly uh, but so what is the usness through a, a godly biblical perspective that that goes forward into 
relationships. And, the, and, and so what resonated with me so strongly was the, the foundation that, that your marriage and the, and, and my marriage and the, and the, the cohesiveness and the conflict is the interface between you and, and the really real, the, the deep, mm -hmm. the meaningful, the why, the identity. And, and if, if, if you are out there alone, uh, right? Like no man is an island, but if you are like, well, I like the white water, I can do this. Give me my canoe. And this is, this is where I, uh, okay. But there is, there's going to be a break in all likelihood there's there's going to be conflict and and i think that's kind of where you and and me and our various stories in our mid 50s are are yeah. 20 30 years into that and that's where i think terry has struck a chord in the us because that's who he's writing to right when we are gwyneth paltrow's age i think well and i well not his age but you know his his intro or the forward was by bruce, bruce springsteen Green. And he's, he's, he's got to be older. Yeah, yeah, I think he's older. He, he so Bruce's story, um, and as well as another story that Terry related to in the book, were both guys. It just happened to be. It doesn't matter. But who said how I am? My individualistic, rugged, you know, whatever nature has served me well in my vocation. Yeah. Number one. And the one guy said, and it also. I'm just good with it. It serves me in general and I'm good except for their marriages or, and I think we can say, say your intimate relationships, whether you're married or not, but even if it's a, a nuclear family, a nuclear family, yeah. or even a, a really, I mean, it could be you and me close and, a, friends, and a yeah. close friends if we cohabitated and raised kids together and whatever, but it didn't serve them there. And I think that's, it. And then it's almost a decision for me. Okay. Do I want to stay over here and what serves me? Well, what gets me applause from the world, what makes money on a podcast, whatever. Yeah. Um, or do I want more? And I'm looking at, of course, obviously my marriage, I'm looking at my kids. I'm looking at even the deep friendships. I mean, I expect us to be friends. Where are we going to go from our fifties? Or if we're going to be friends in our eighties, do we want more from each other, you know, even the right. iron sharpens iron. And what does that take? How do we look at it as an us and you and I having done business together and I expect us to, can, to do more, I would like to do it different. I need to, I want to do it different. Mm -hmm. I, the way you and I have done business as partners and best friends, I want to do it different. I have done it individualistic and I knew mm -hmm. that I was, and it's just the language that I speak. And I kind of want to, I don't want to wait on you to some degree, I don't want to be accountable to you. Mm -hmm. And so his book, you know, making me come to terms with that and going, yeah, I don't do stuff well as us. And so somebody's out there listening and thinks that they do, you know, could they do it better? And do you do it in every place? I think that there's some instances as I'm looking at this through a different lens where I see somebody go, gosh, they do. I see them doing us really well here, but not over here. Right. They do it well in their marriage, not in their work, in their work, not in their marriage. They do right. it well as a parent, but not as a friend. I don't know. Yeah. Everybody's got to look at it. I don't think like you say, it's just probably a spectrum yeah. and it's going to be a different spectrum with different relationships. Sure. And so I'm looking at it and going, how do I be a better friend? How do I be a better business partner? How a better spouse, a better, I'm talking about it with my kids now, a better father. It, so like we say so often, how do you build a better friendship in the same language almost as well, how do you build a better body, a better metabolism? And uh, there is no pill for that. There is no one size fits all. There's no algorithm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm chewing on that now too. How do we, cause we've always talked about, well, okay, how do you build a better marriage? But there's not a whole lot of books out about that on how to build a better friendship or there's probably books on business partnerships. Um, which we use, we've referred to a lot of times that you and I have had a marriage in, mm -hmm. especially in business. And we have joined in this mm -hmm. thing where, or, or me in the past where that marriage, we called it a divorce, right? It felt like a divorce to get out of a business partnership with other people. Yeah. And you've done that to a greater degree than I have. So. Yeah. And it, we called it a divorce. It feels like that in the amount of heartache and money ache and, uh, you know, pain in the rear ache is, analogous to what somebody would go through if you end a marriage and 
a a real marriage. And so, yeah, how do you and I, if if we're the ones talking to ourselves, build a better friendship? And and I well, I just want to say I don't want to. Freak. I mean, I have in in the realm of business and sports and endeavors and stuff. If I go back, I have a long list of people maybe not to the level you and I have gotten to, but that I have been joined with some of which you, you would know in the past who I hurt the relationship by my individualistic nature, not being uh, us and did divorce. Well, unwell, sorry, did divorce unwell. And today the relationships are kind of strained or non-existent. And then again, that's part of my past, but it, it is relevant. I mean, and anyway, I didn't talk about this with Terry. It doesn't mean we're all going to do us the same. It would, that would be impossible. That would be impossible. And there's probably relevance for me to understand myself, which is a big part of this, understand myself and my propensities and say, okay, I could try to do us with this person, but understanding them, it's probably not a good union. Mm -hmm. I probably am not well suited to do us with them. Somebody else is mm -hmm. I'm better suited to do us. And if I look at business partners or something, I'm going to see some that I know that, man, that's going to be a gigantic mm -hmm. difficulty to be an us with mm -hmm. them. With you, I think, mm -hmm. I think I can do that, mm -hmm. but I need to be more open with our propensities. And, you know, that, that we, we never did this, but we talked about it. What you just said is where I would like to envision the word contract. Okay. In, in, in the best sense of the word, the word contract has a negative connotation. I'm going to hold you accountable and you're going to owe me time, money, something. Now, to me, it feels untrusting at That's face right. value. It feels like, so you don't trust me. So we have to make a contract, flip it around. Cause you and I, you, you did want to do some contracts and I never, but I, I think blocked. I language it this way or I, maybe I didn't, maybe I did us poorly and I didn't language it, yeah. but I would say, Kevin, I know me yeah. and my propensity is to want to behave this way. Yeah. You need a contract to protect you from me. Yeah, that's a great way to. Can you imagine a contract worded to protect you from me? And, and, and vice versa, you do the same thing. And then we meld the two together to create. I mean, don't you think that that, would, that kind of exemplifies sort of the contract that, sort of, that God had with Abraham, that, that Jesus kind of proposes for us over here, where he says, you know, kind of, well, you have heard it said, here's the contract. Don't do this, do that, and you're good. But I say, step into an usness of deep humility, deep awareness. And even if you look at that woman with these kind of internal awarenesses, you're you're breaking contract. Yeah. But you can have the confidence that at the end of that, you know, Sermon on the Mount kind of thing, he says, This is life on the rock of goodness, of not wealth and power and misogynistic, you know, success along the rugged individual American, you know, dream pathway, but life on the rock is confidence that you will honor that person the way that they desire to be honored. And, and that's what I think building a better marriage. I, I'm, I'm even, I'm feeling so convicted right now in I my know. own relationships that I haven't expressed that to my, even this morning in, in coffee, when we were talking about our kids and could I go to my 16 year old and say, I am such a not great father that I want to express something to you with these words. And, you know, of course he's 16. He, he's not going to understand, but how do I teach him to understand? But so that he doesn't yeah. get wounded and whatever and be talking, you know, in, in at 36 and 46, that I, I'm feeling convicted. Yeah, well, your word of honor. And you, you asked, are you at the, at the start of this conversation, I thought you are, I felt like you were relating to Terry Reel's book as in my head, I was paraphrasing that it was conceptual. It, maybe it didn't feel super specific, actionable. You said you didn't have, feel like you had some mind blowing epiphany, you know, from that. And it is, it's a, it's a conceptual perspective. And I don't know that he did have specific, okay, so do this. And I'm grappling with the overall, you know, concept part of it. And even as you talk and you said the word honor. That if I'm going to, and I'll just use you, if I'm going to honor you, it would be considering you and 
it, you know, just in a relationship. I mean, you and I come in and we just kind of, we just, we just be, we don't, I don't think about it. And maybe that's great if it's possible. Maybe that's unique. Maybe that's, maybe that's rare. And, you know, if I look at, I mean, when you go into a patient prior to that, my experience of you is you have been reviewing their stuff. You're trying to get to know their story. And then you go in with them and you start off with, okay, tell me more about this. And you are understanding them and you are, I don't know a better word than performing. It's such a bad word for it, but you are making an effort. You're not just being free Randy and just no thought or causation or, 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 or consideration. Do I do that in my relationships to say, that's what it's got me to. If I'm going to bring this issue to my spouse or to you, you go, okay, Randy's probably, and I did this with you back, especially back when we first started working together and you were, you were the stressed one. Mm -hmm. going nuts. And I would, I don't want to stress you more. I want you to acquiesce to whatever or submit to whatever, or, or I want to sell you on something, whatever. And I'm thinking about the timing. Is this a good time to talk to you? Mm -hmm. How should I present it in a way that's not going to raise red flags? I would do that with you because I don't want an adverse reaction because I'm conflict averse, mm -hmm. you know? And so do I do that? Do I have the thought to honor you and even my own selfish needs to prepare, to think through, to consider and to make an effort to give this interaction, some structure and, and honoring as opposed to just going and going, okay, you know what? You're on the phone, but just listen, I got this, blah, 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 blah. And in our intimate relationships, we tend to, I think I do, but I see it culturally. We tend to just, can I just be me? Can I just, ugh, I've been making an effort all day. Can I just, blah, 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 blah. And we don't give that person the consideration, respect, an aspect of love and consider how are they going to receive this? Mm -hmm. How can I serve them? Well, e even that thought of, yeah. Flipping the contract. If this isn't a contract to save me, it's to save it, you from me. It, that's right. Put such a different, how can I do that in my relationships mm -hmm. to be more us? Mm -hmm. And I do think Terry real put mm -hmm. good verbiage to that of saying, look, I want like, especially in a conflict, Randy, man, I, I so care about your perspective and I want to hear you. Could you say it a little softer mm -hmm. or can we talk about this? Another, this is, I'm just not a good place mm -hmm. for it or whatever. But the mm -hmm. first put that care. I don't, man. I, I hit the first thing I hit in an intimate thing is I get, I feel defensive. Mm -hmm. I feel accused mm -hmm. and, and I react. Mm -hmm. And already by the time that there has been reacting, there has been multiple, multiple, multiple subconscious brain body things that unless you are a, well, my pits are sweating, nervous yeah. sweat, uh, and in heart rates up and you would have to be a very humble, wise person to even submit to that awareness. And I haven't, I just withdraw. I've right. done it with you and go, I don't, I'm just waiting for this to get over. Can we just part ways go, and forget about it? Go, go back to our Draw. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us listening or hearing in, you know, especially in a marriage, a marriage is such the crucible it's, of this. It's the, it's, it is the most, I mean, I'm trying to <laughs> do it between you and me, but there's nothing more acute that's vulnerable. Right. That's right. Then the marriage. And then I think then, you know, fatherhood and sonship, childhood yeah. would be very, very. And, and, and then I, I think what we've had is, is a business partnership and a friendship. Yeah. Like those would be sort of distant, but close seconds where like, think of it, think of marriage as a contract. I mean, that is what it, for better, for worse, for mm -hmm. richer, for poor, for whatever, for your sake, not for my sake. Now, I think today people get married because they say, oh, he or she just makes me so happy or she makes me feel good or she makes me feel like a man or whatever. Like it's me oriented rather than, oh, my gosh, I honor. I, I want to create a contract so that I can help this person become a better them. And we're just better together. Like, I honestly I'm, don't. I'm it, feeling convicted. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it, it's this. Oh, maybe it's a rabbit trail. It's not necessary. I, I am surprised these days. And I haven't looked at the stats. But I continue to find myself surprised that as many people as there are, are getting married. I, I, okay. So I was just in Wichita and, and my extended family and whatever else. And, you know, now young people are getting married or not. And I'm like, yeah, unless you have a, a foundational, fundamental sort of, I would say, you know, faith-based or tradition-based, whatever about marriage, then, then why would you? Because it's a pain in the rear, right? Like, why would... Why would I go to you with that kind of a contract that holds me accountable? Yeah. I want to hold you accountable. And how it's hard. That's way it's, easier. It's an effort to get out of that. 
Oh is gosh. A lot of people. Well, are theoretically, you're constructing a contract because you're not getting out of it. Well, but statistically, we are getting out of it. <laughs> I know. So why get married? I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just surprised with today's day and age and with the thought processes and the freedoms and the individualistic nature of why people do that as opposed to just come together, be there as long as it's nice. And if it's not, then you back out and there's mm-hmm. not any big deal. Uh, so it's interesting that people still still do that i've heard even in in a a lot of people even here on the show that are not faith-based you know they're not in a religious construct or container as you and i talk about i look at them i'm i'm I'm, I'm surprised i'm curious why and i haven't done that there's been a couple i've thought about it why i'm surprised that you even we had i had somebody gosh i don't want to had somebody on the show that had a different marital arrangement that was shocking to a lot of people not some open marriage, but you know, they spend a lot of time apart. Matter of fact, I think I saw it through Terry real stuff where, cause Gwyneth Paltrow's company goop, whatever mm-hmm. was part of the publication of that other uh, person's stuff. Well, she said uh, something to the effect of like she and her husband spend like a week together and a week apart, mm-hmm. you know, these different things. And I'm, and I'm, again, I'm wondering why did you even go? Yeah. They don't have kids. For well, I think they have like their own from previous marriages, like you know the celebrity thing. But um, why did they get married? Why did they go through this? Because we have a lot of people, especially these days, that look at marriage as this Christian religious construct, which it is. And yeah, so I don't know. It's, I don't know if that's a well. Maybe maybe it's not. I heard somebody argue the other day that it isn't Christian; it's creational. It's marriage exists better tax before. benefits. If you're, you know, <laughs> technically, if you, well, that in and of are. itself was a, remember it was called the marriage there back before you got the benefits, there was the marriage tax. You actually had to pay more. Like you were penalized for oh. marriage. Now you're kind of rewarded for marriage. Well, now the unmarried people can say, well, we've got a, an unmarried tax and that's not fair either. We should be benefited because we're living together or because I'm single. Hmm. Anyway, we're getting well, lost in the political well, but it, but it is, social construct. If we're, with this individ, individualistic mm-hmm. nature of our culture, it is surprising enough people even do the contract of marriage. But if we do, you were talking earlier, and I was thinking of our buddy Scott and his thing years ago, you'll remember this, where he said, in the marriage, can we, in the partnership, whatever, can we take these issues. And instead of being, now he didn't say it in these words, so I'm going to overlap Terry reels instead of being individualistic and putting this object between, between us, us and right. going, okay, that I see it that way. I see it. You, you know, you see it that way. I don't agree. Right, wrong, whatever. Can we turn sideways, link arms or arms around each other, put that thing out there in front of us and look at it together and how, go, how do we, how do we grapple with that? And I love his statement. I repeated it yesterday of in essence, right or wrong does not matter. If this is a relationship, we've got to, for the most part, you know, right or wrong does not matter. It is a thing. How, what matters is how do we hold it together in a way that is productive, productive for both of uh that serves both of us. That is an us uh, Mentality. mentality that I don't, again, it's just, it's not part of my nature. I tend to think I'm going to do it that way. And you know what? So let's just not do the relationship. I'll just do my thing. You do your thing to some degree. Well, and even where you guys have been even recently over the summer and saying, Hey, how can we, you know, create a a bit of separation and space and air so that I can work on me and you can work on you. And then we come back together and, you know, how does that promote usness? And, and, um, I, I appreciated Terry where one of the things I was going to bring up, I just lost the thread uh, on, on the togetherness, um, so, oh, everybody in a marriage has that moment where I, I just almost like you need that moderator to say, Oh, Kevin, you're right. And your, your wife is wrong. <laughs> and you're like, mm. <laughs> can, and, right. and Terry just, he took that right off the table. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You, you know, if right or wrong, it, it just doesn't matter. And, and I, that just makes me a little, but, 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 but I need you to see my perspective. And, and, and it's, it's like the old business thing that if you argue with a customer and prove they're wrong, you both lose. You're not yeah, going to retain. They they're not coming back. So in the marriage. So if you, if you win and prove and win, you lost, you lost. And that was his point. 
you live together. Why do you want to win? That is a loss. That is so hard. That is so hard. And so taking that to heart, it's like, okay, in my own mind, how then do we, and, and I did, we talked about this and I think you used the word honor yeah. and there, there's a scriptural thing I brought up with the kids the other day. I forgot where it is, but if we Google it, we'll find it real quick. And the, and the phrase is this outdo one another in showing honor. There, there's your competition. I, I wrote outdo. It came right up. Romans 12, 10. So out of the Bible, compete with each other to honor the other guy more. Can you imagine? No, because that's the rub um, that we hear so often, especially in marriages and in marriage counseling, where you have one party who is more willing than the other. And they're saying, okay, I will be us. I will open up. I will give, I will do whatever. And the other one goes, great. You're darn right. It's about time. <laughs> give. give. And, and that's not sustainable. <laughs> and, and we see that. I, I say that that's not sustainable. Generally, I think I asked Terry about this, you know, can there be success when you have one spouse who is more willing than the other? And I think he said, yes, it's not, it's not best. Best case scenario is you got two going, Hey, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll serve you, but we still tend to even in that sense, and even when Terry said, look, if you win, there is no winner. And ultimately, you're going to live together. So you, you've got to go this way. But we're humans. And so and we're the, selfish. I mean, we, just, I we just can't not be. To we say, cannot be. Even as I, in my own mind, think, okay, I'm really, I'm really honoring you. Please honor me. Please honor me. Please honor uh -huh. me. Can I, I, can't, I can't feel you honoring me. And the other person is thinking, I am honoring you out the wazoo. Can you not see? And, and the answer is no, because you're often you you are not honoring me in a way that I care about. Okay, which we're back to. This is why every week when I get the bestseller list from my literary agency, almost every week, New York Times bestseller list in the advice how to and uh, advice miscellaneous and how to, which is what self help falls into, almost always, Gary Chapman's <clears throat> Five Love Languages. Yeah. Because it resonates, I'm not going to say the book is is the Bible, but it obviously resonates with people because they realize that, gosh, this is how I receive love. And this, so please give me love this way. But now I'm hearing that you don't receive, a, a, my, my way is, you know, acts of uh, uh, kindness. What is it called? Kindness, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think acts of I, kindness. I said, uh -huh. Yeah. It, and, and that I don't want you to do acts of kindness to me. I want you to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, and it's hard. It's still hard. It's still hard because we feel as we feel. And it's hard to, again, we're back to the honor. If I can make the effort then to realize that even though acts of service benefits, that's how I get it. It's not you. Yours is words of encouragement. I don't, I'll own this one um, because acts do matter. That That is a, a, lo a love language for me. Words of encouragement are just not so much. I just, I, and yet if that's my wife and that's what she's giving me, it just falls on deaf ears. I don't, that's great that you encourage me. That's just not what I'm looking. It's not what does it for me. So what, and there we are, what does it now for you and making an effort and we don't want to have to make an effort. Can it just be me? And can we just <sighs> kick back and not, you know? Yes. And, 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 and that's why I, uh, you know, the usness is going to also incorporate even bigger circles right? Like I can't ask you to give me what I need as if you're my wife and vice versa. Marcy doesn't need me to just hang out with her. Like I would hang out with you in a iron sharpens iron kind of way, or just a fun kind of a way that that is part of the gosh, infinite complexity. Man, I don't want to miss this because we've come up with this multiple times over the years. It still matters to me. So we're talking about us in a relationship. Let's say it's a marriage relationship. Let's even say that, the, you know, somebody is not married, doesn't have a good marriage and their main relationship is here. Like you and me friends, this man, this is where I get it. The propensity that we have then to go after that usness with an individual, a single individual and look for them to complete all the usness that we need. There's the biggest rub that I have seen in marriage because I came into my marriage thinking, expecting it to be everything. I am going to get all my usness, yeah. all my needs. And yet how on earth can Kevin, I go to, you had me at hello. <laughs> well, how can I go to my wife and have her commiserate about what it's like to be a husband or a father? She cannot do it. Right. So there's an usness culturally though. That's, 
that's the movies. That's the books. That's you the, com- you com- yeah, man, you nailed it. You complete me. I, I, I love that movie. Please take that part out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause what it sets up is if I don't feel quite right, it is your fault. You're not feeling my needs and that, which in a bigger rub is the question that I don't believe that there's an answer for, but we got to figure out are what are the needs that I want from this relationship, from this us that are, that are healthy or what are the needs that are a void that shouldn't be, that should be between me and God or me and myself or, or, or again, even another person, like if I'm going to my wife to get, or if she's coming to me trying to get me to understand her pains as a mother, I can try to sympathize, but I just don't have a context for that. It'd be like her coming and going, gosh, can you relate to giving birth? I just can't. I just can't. And you know, that's an exaggeration, but so many of that. So if we're looking for an us completion in that marital relationship, I don't, you're, you're See off the, on the wrong foot. I think from so. The beginning, Cause that is the exact opposite than going in. I am seeking to honor you even as a friendship, but over here in a marriage, a course, sort of a step up in connectedness. I, you, I would say you can't go into a marriage seeking for any needs to be fulfilled. That's they will be. That's a part of it. There's not a nothingness, but if you marry somebody and there's, you know, I don't know, whatever, quadriplegic, something or other, there is no sexual fulfillment. Well, our culture today would say that's not a marriage. And I would say that, well, that's dumb. So if you go into a marriage saying, okay, I need that part of me fulfilled. Well, you're off on the wrong foot. If, 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 you, if you go in fulfilling your own need in any way, shape or form, but I, Right away, I think, yeah, but I, I just want to be married and I want to have kids and, you know, well, play house. Okay. And- I, I, this is a huge, a huge, uh, I, I, a very important area, I, I believe, because it does question in a marriage or in a, in a, in a, in a, in a friendship, I want you to need me. I want you to want my attention. I want you, I appreciate when you walk in my office or, you know, we take time or you ask me, you know, if we're going to do lunch today and, and that you, and even if you ask me for help you know, or like our buddy Todd, who recently said, guys, can you come out and help me do mm-hmm. some cleanup stuff at my cabin and, and whatnot? We appreciate that. Call it a want, call it a need, but it's, a, am I unwhole without right. that need? So do I come into a marriage? And I thought about this. You'll, you had a, an employee we did who was mid thirties unmarried. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Very much she wanted to, but it did get me thinking, is she unwhole? Is she lacking as a person, as an individual, as under God, as a child? Is she, because she is not married and I can't make a case for for that. So if you, so should I not be a whole complete person in and of myself outside of marriage and relationship to a degree? Yeah. And then, but I come into a marriage because I want I want more. I just like, I, I want, I can exist idea. without seeing the outside, but it raises my life. To- well, I, and this is where I would say within the Christian t- tradition, it's the mystery of marriage of one plus one equals one of I am whole without you. Uh, and, but I am wholer in, in a, in a marriage. And that that's the mystery. Well, it, it is the infiniteness of what makes marriage also very interesting. It's the bothness of mutual submission. Okay, let me ask you a question. The marital, and I don't know if it's Christian or or what, but that marital thing of, if you've been to a, a wedding, you've probably seen it where they have two candles, you, or you yeah. each have a candle, you come forward, you light the one candle, and you blow out your own. I, I really struggle with that I, today. I, I would too, yeah. So I don't exist outside. And I'm again, get all my needs met through you. I would be, I'd be more, seems more relevant as we're sitting here talking to have, Mm -hmm. should I have, you know, had my wife or my, you know, just, just about to be wife, have a candle, have you, my buddy have a candle, have my parents have a candle and we all go light one together and then also keep our own. Mm -hmm. And we have Mm -hmm. now created a bond, a contract Mm -hmm. that exists, something there, but man, Mm -hmm. I still exist over here and I need to, mm-hmm. you might die tomorrow mm-hmm. and, and you, you can't fulfill all my gotta, needs. 
raise the kids and, and do all of the stuff that is still the marriage. Yeah, I'm kind of into that. Why can't we have one where you light that candle? Do you just now, we have created a contract and a bond and I keep my candle. Yeah. Why do we blow it? Is that a, is there some, that's, am that's I great saying question. something blasphemous? That's <laughs> I, I, get... I don't really know. Why not? Because we also use the, the, the mental imagery of three, but a, a man, woman, and God, and there's a, a three in one. That's the Trinity kind of an idea. It is mysterious and it is, I would say miraculous that, that, that this can exist, that this does exist. And that's why scripturally God uses this as an example of, of his own relationship with us, his own relationship with himself is this mysterious relationship uh -huh. bonding. I thought you were going to bring up the word cleaving, uh -huh. but even if there is a cleave, that's a, that's a, such a Bible word. I know. I don't What's even, the other word? Uh, knit. Yeah. Joining it, yeah. That uh, it's really weird because cleave also means to cut. I know. That's, I don't know. We have to even, look that word up. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm I'm thinking that's you know, a weird Christianese word. It, it is so thread yarn. Okay. That if you had that this cloth, I could pick one of the threads and unravel it. Yeah. It exists individually within the whole. Yeah. individually it is a piece of thread within the whole it is a shirt so that's kind of how i'm seeing what you said the 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 individual and togetherness of a marriage that there is and that's why the cleaving the undoing of it the asunder rips because part of me is in her and then if we if she died or divorced or whatever else it hurts there's, there's a tearing and a ripping and a pain. And that's relevant. And that's like having a kid, man. I'm not so, I mean, they're a part of me and I would think yeah. our spouse and, and you're a part of me, man. If yeah. you died, it would be it would, ripping, ripping a thread. And yet I do need to be in a place. This is morbid, but I, I think about it. I've got nine kids. I need to be at a place where I can withstand losing a child. My chances are much higher or a friend or a spouse or, a friend or, or yeah. an arm or a leg. Yeah. 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 Which again, it, in movies the other day where you see people say, oh, you don't, you've never known love until that baby is born. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Because I was thinking just as I talked about our friend who had been single for a long time and, you know, could have continued to her, her whole life, uh -huh. would she have missed out on some significant experiences? Yes. Yeah. But I was thinking about this in regards to our friends, Scott and Hermine, uh, who never had children. And to think, are they less whole because they did not have children? I would say there are some things that I've gotten to experience as a parent that they will not experience. Just like I can't experience childbirth because I'm not a woman. Um, likewise, there are some things that they've experienced that I will not experience. I do not have the bandwidth. I don't have the time. I'm not going to invest in that. They are either way. Are they not whole alone? But again, granted, they would, they would experience some sure. beauties of life to have had been parents. So here I am as an individual, and I feel called to be whole as unto, you know, in, in our economy, as unto God, as unto ourselves, whatever I'm called to, to that. But when I join light that candle, I'm saying, I want to experience something that it, this kind of union can give me. I, we can't call it's it an addition. You can't call it more wholeness. It's Thank one you. plus one equals one. It's it, it, again, we're not going to land on a word because it is infinite. It is mysterious. It is the reality that we live in botherness. That there is, and well, what if what? I, okay, I'm 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 thinking about your one plus. Is that I don't know if I do. I like that. Could back to your Trinity? Could could one plus one equal three? Like the candles? Or, or sure. Yes. Again, you can almost four, five, six. It, the imagery of a hole plus a hole equals a different kind of a hole. Yeah. Not a better hole, not holer, but a different hole than us. Okay. So coming back to us, us and individualism, is it saying, okay, if I want to be here, Kevin, I'll own it. If I want to be here in my, in a sense, I'm kind of happy. Being my own individualistic self, it, it helps me with, you know, my work. It's good with athletics. 
I've got friendships. I've got relationships. I'm, I'm kind of good, but if I want to experience this marriage, this business partnership, this intimate relationship, uh, uh, you know, as intimate as I can be with my kids and, and whatnot, if I'm doing that, that's me saying I am willing to forego. I don't, I was going to say give up. I don't, I don't know, but I'm willing to enter in and I am going to relinquish some of my individualism and seek an us. I can't have both. I can't have my cake and eat it too. And so maybe that's what I've been trying to do. I've tried to be an individual while being a spouse. And at the end of the day, it's not, it doesn't create us. So if I'm going to create us, I've got to give, I give up is a bad word. What's a, what's a, what's, yeah, I I just had a really good picture here where we were using cloth and thread Mm -hmm. cooking. Okay. Yeast in the dough. Yeah. And imagine that, (laughs) okay, my son the other day, he made brownies or cookies or something, and um, he forgot to set the butter out to let it get soft. Yeah. And so in the middle, so he started mixing it in, and then he's like, oh, and so he threw it in the mic. no. (laughs) So it was partially cooked, Uh and then when the cookies came out, they crumbled. Okay, now use the image with me from from the marriage kind of perspective that if you come into this marriage and you hold a part of you back and you don't get like the imagery of the yeast going all throughout, like there's not a single part of that cooked whole bread over here that does not have a microscopic piece of yeast and yet it's not yeast and it's not wheat anymore, it's bread. It's, Hmm. but it's, 100% 100% yeast is in there and 100% wheat is in there, but it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Molecularly, you could pull the yeast and the, and the wheat pieces apart, but right like that, that imagery is now. It's, it's and, relevant. It's still hard because then you're saying it's I've, totally hard because it's cause, impossible to be completely not Kevin yeah, and be completely in a marriage of not Kevin that, that does not exist. But if you demand or hope or retain any part of Kevin alone, you're going to crumble the marriage. You're going to weaken the Gosh, togetherness. That's, that's hard. It's impossible. Well, but hold on. If I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold both of them. The one plus one equals three because I, I feel like to some degree, there we go. coming back to, there are some pieces of me that are not, I mean, my wife does not like mountain biking. Yeah, but she you are never mountain biking as a single person. Ever. We've talked about that before. You go away for a week or whatever, you're still married. You will never well, have true. a thought. Well, I just did a big adventure with those guys. And on this one sketchy yeah, section, yeah, you I did that sketchy section. My butt uh, puckered because of my I'm wife gonna, and kids. I'm going to orphan my kids. If it had been just me years ago, I don't know if I had much of thought about it, but I'm thinking about my responsibilities that are, that's right. That's like, fair. That's fair. And, and, and that's what I mean. That okay. now you could have, so Marcy and I had, there's another friend of ours and, and the husband is going off to do Everest. And we're like, well, shame on him. Like, okay. And, and we, we recanted a little bit because there was, you know, issues or whatever, but the idea of going to Everest where 10% of people die every year or something like that. It's like, can you do that to your wife? And then that movie came out, you know, where the guy died on Everest. Yeah, well, I'm, I, and- no, I literally marked that off though. I, I love adventures. I love the adrenaline. If the risk of error is death, or severe dismemberment, don't, I'm don't out. Do it. I because I made an I made a contract over here. I have dependents. That's right. So even though I checked out my life insurance again yesterday, but if you had been 20, I'm you, oh, I'm you would have. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things I wish I had done because now I'm not going to. Okay. Or unless fair. I'm maybe, maybe in 20 years when everybody's set. And uh I, I yeah. Okay, that's 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 fair. So you that's a, you and I, maybe we, we get to live together if we make it to 90 and maybe, you know, our wives die when they're 89 or whatever. And, and we'll, we'll go, go and be bachelors. <laughs> we'll go to Everest. We'll be yeah. the oldest men. I wonder who the oldest person do. Actually, I have no desire at all to do Everest. Uh, I want to do something way less hard and less cold. And- yeah. I mean, you know, so, you know, again, back here, this is what it has me thinking about is how do I enter into relationships as with my, my propensity and nature to be individualistic, what would it look like to do it as a more 
us. And I, maybe you, you know, your, your aspect of the contract is brilliant of how do I think about it in your interests? It's just, but even as I say that everybody's going to hear this and they're, and it's going to make their butt pucker to say, I'm going to do, I'm going to enter in and I'm going to do this for your interest. But if you don't also reciprocate, it's often untenable. I think I, that's what bothers me because I see people and you, you know, they speak, a, you know, they want to do, they really have good intent, but it's so difficult to do it one sided. No different than we've talked about for years. When you have a patient who comes in here with significant pathologies and you lay out a plan for life change that would change their life. And yet they go home and if they do not have support and even more so if they have contention against that new diet style or exercise regime or sleep schedule or whatever, it's incredibly difficult. They would do it on their own, but in conjunction with that relationship, it makes it so difficult. So as people hear this and go, yeah, I'm going to do this us thing. And I'm going to do like Randy said with the contract and come in with your interest. If you take advantage of that, it's hard for many people to withstand which comes back to my question, Terry, is this, is, can that happen unless you have two understanding, aware, willing parties? And he said, can, it's really hard. It's really hard. It's really hard. And that, that is at the end of the day, then Kevin is also like in, in our economy, I, our friend Dustin said, who is such a humble, yeah, such a soft, gentle guy and and he said to me one day he said you know randy i i trust the jesus in you yeah i i and that's where i would go to you that if i if you and i came to one another with a a contract of of hey i'm i do i trust you i trust my wife that there will be reciprocation not perfection not whatever, but I, if not, then you're holding back and, and you can't knead the dough that way that it's not yeah. going to get in. And, and, I, at, and that's, that's the miracle. At the end of the day, we all put our hearts out there It and, feels, and, and they get trampled it, and depression, you know, the diseases of despair and how much abuse as a, as a child that people go through and all of the heinous, whatever is out there. And how much of depression is coming from loneliness, whether you're married or not a feeling of on your own, no support. It, it, it feels to me like we're, you know, we're, we're called to in Terry's economy here to look at with each other, whether it's, whether it's us looking at entering into another business, you know, contract mm -hmm. together or, or whatnot, or a marriage saying, how do we do this us together? Mm -hmm. And we take, there's no absolutions. You know, if we're going to enter in this, there's no, um, I was gonna think not, not uh, unilateral decisions are mm -hmm. off the table. Um, there's really not room again for right or wrong. Now we say that and we can get into morality and stuff, mm -hmm. but of, of, of convincing the other, this isn't my job to convince. We have to put this out and go, what, how do we deal with this in a way that mm -hmm. serves us both? If we can't, we can't do us. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people can't mm -hmm. or can't with that, you know, with X person. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to, you know, especially on the forefront, that would be the best time to do it as opposed to being in it. And then, you know, it's going to be hard for some people to mm -hmm. look at that. And they're going to look and go, yeah, as I hear all this stuff, I'm realizing I'm with somebody and I, we can't do us together. <clears throat> and so there, there has to be change. And, and as we angle toward the bottom line here now, yeah for for me and i'm i'm so grateful to wake up every morning and say oh god i can't do this yeah i i can't be this kind of husband father dad business person uh, and think about this and think about that and be this for that person and then you know patient after patient after patient and employee after employee and and and, and the reality is you can't and and for me it's like okay so there's a there's a faith there's a together withness with God in this little corner of, of the world that you and Terry don't like the word and, and, but you have dominion over you. Only you can think about what you think about. Even in the Holocaust, you can choose to be okay. That is dominion right now. It got misogynistically misappropriated, but unless you take dominion over a tree, then you don't make that house over there and look at the wood. Now, can we ruin the world and ruin the forest? Sure, but you don't have music without a guitar, without mm -hmm. a tree. 
Okay, so that is proper or good, whatever, awareness of your control over yourself. But if you think for a second you have control over every part of you, then you are going to be a hurting, a lonely, okay. sick person. Great segue into something that I, I'm not going to let us end. Um, because your job, Randy James, medical doctor, people come to you because they can't figure it out by themselves. Fair. Otherwise, why can't, I mean, they can, right. they can go on to Google and figure listen to whatever podcast, figure out, they don't need you. They come to you and spend a lot of time, a lot of money. And I'm going to say a lot of hassle, a lot of discomfort effort. Yeah. You, Cause none of nobody comes in and you go, Hey, what are you doing? And they tell you, and you say, I just keep doing that. The yeah. only reason they're in there is to change doing that, whatever, yep. you know, it's some, to some degree. Um, is it possible to do us in any capacity to the greatest success on our own, only between us, the best business partners I've heard, especially if you go to the, you know, the bigger levels and the big companies and whatever generally have somebody helping mediate, having, mm -hmm. have somebody just to what you said, we can't see ourselves. We can't be selfless. It's impossible. And yet here we are looking at each other and I trying to do it to the best of our ability and understand the other person. And I, I feel like we're limited in that. And so from a health standpoint, I can't figure I need, I need help from somebody. Do we not, how much of a benefit would I have to have a parent, have a, have a coach, a mediator, a moderator looking at my parenting and what I'm doing with my kid and over here and go, do you realize you're doing this? Mm -hmm. And do you realize they're doing this? I mean, you and mm -hmm. I talk all the time mm -hmm. about parenting, trying to mm -hmm. figure the heck out what we're doing. And why do we not do that with marriage? Can I really have the best marriage possibly without somebody sitting back, even if they're going, gosh, you guys are doing pretty good, but I do see you have a propensity mm -hmm. to do that. And when you do that, I see him kind of shut down or you, do you see when you do that? She mm -hmm. just kind of moved back and, mm -hmm. and that's happening all the time. Are you guys aware of that? Gosh, no. Or maybe, yeah, I am aware of that, but I don't know because, cause he does this and you're going, no, I'm not. And you got somebody who's helping us see the light. Now, this isn't me making a pitch that everybody has to have a coach in every area of your life, but it is curious in the time that we are back to individualism, when we used to have, you know, that takes a village to raise a child, takes a village to have a good marriage, takes a village to be a good friend. We do not have villages anymore. We don't have aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and neighbors and whatever involved in our lives in any way that can speak into them. Mm -hmm. Like the big fat Greek wedding movie mm -hmm. it doesn't really exist. And so we're on our own. And mm -hmm. I wonder if that's a primary danger. We're mm -hmm. trying to do us. If we're trying to do us, it's just you and me. I don't yeah. want to do, I don't actually, I don't want to go into business just with you again, ever. We, we need, would be unwise to do that. It, we're, we're, yeah. We don't balance each other out. Well, we either need, I think we need a CEO mm -hmm. with anything we do at the least. We need somebody who's like an executive, uh, a, a, a chief manager who will manage us. Cause we don't manage. Mm -hmm. Well, we need somebody that we're accountable to whether they're an employee or a board mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. or, or whatever, not even cause we have conflict just cause we're incompetent together mm -hmm. and we can't, we need, yeah. Why would we not need you, that? In a I marriage? thought you were going to say the word community. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about that, but say in light of not having that, if it's a paid consultant, coach, therapist, counselor, which used to be community, yeah. family, village, whatever the you thing went and is. sat with grandma and grandpa and they, well, you didn't have any choice because they were there. Yeah. <laughs> they were in your business. That's the big fat Greek wedding. It was dysfunctional it, somewhat, but it also had great strengths and another... as a part of rugged individualism and in, in America and, uh, and the logistics and travel you know, mom and dad aren't around anymore and my cousins aren't around and I'm not in business with them. And so now it's me out here on my own and then, and then a marriage, but it's a marriage on an Island. And we saw that quite acutely in the military too. Cause you know, you go off to Japan and now in the military, you also have a community that is, you carry it with you. Right. Yeah. So there's a strength there, yeah. but also a weakness. And so here we are in the world today in the analysis and I, it's one of the reasons to answer my own question, why I think Terry real is resonating with people is because here we are. And he yeah. took a step back and said, Whoa, people look how fractured we are. Look how spread out we are. Look how, and, and we've lost the, 
what used to be probably intuitive and innate in skills, or let's just say not skills, but the dough kneading together, that's just how it kind of happened. And now it doesn't because you've got Mars and Venus, or you've got, you know, yeast and dough trying to come together or oil and water. Or oil and water. <laughs> right. right. And, and okay. So how then do we do this? And that's, that's why we're doing the show and that's why we're talking about it. And, and I, yes, back to your question of, would we be better to have a moderator? Well, I think the reason that we do, we do that with in the medical field and we call it a doctor, we don't do that in the marriage field until your marriage is on the rocks. Until, until crisis. So we have two people who are innately, intrinsically individuals. It's just have the makeup of, of humanity trying to come together and making bread, making an us, and we're really not equipped to. So who is our, so whether it's, you know, going through Terry Reel's book together, in a marriage or a business part. I mm -hmm. actually, I, and I read some of his stories and I thought I could see that just in any relationship. In any, this is yeah. how I, I do the same thing with Randy. I do the same thing to my kid Yeah, and it, it's relevant, but can we come together wise enough, insightful enough as individuals to create an us. And I, I, I'm tempted to say our, the design of God or whatever you believe is, is not that it's that we have, we have help. We have accountability. We have insight from other people, whether it's a paid person or a family member, man. We well, I, I was just going to say the answer is yes. Right. Like the, even if we don't have that, and here's where I would say, I have a faith that there is a higher existence, a higher order than me that I am going to submit to. And I think my wife is going to submit to and in our mutual submission to greaterness than me is step number one that we are not only linking arms together looking at a problem to solve like how do you raise a kid for 18 years but we're linking arms together to say yeah we aren't all that we there's something bigger grander greater than us that we are submitting to and now we are one knit closer together yeah okay and and in that space i don't think that that needs a coach all the time otherwise we'd all have to have a coach for every single well, thing okay, all the time granted i mean not all the time but but i also think that there's you know why wait so long to get help from your mom or your pastor well, or your friend or your pay account well, or your doctor or, most or your doctor i actually i don't know the stats but theoretically most people are at least once a year going to get some kind of a checkup well, when was the last time I got a checkup? What? No, I don't believe in a checkup. Just like you're getting ready to say about a marriage. Why don't we do a marriage checkup? I, I don't think oh, a body okay. need. Is that where you're going? Yeah, I disagree with you. Uh, I, I, for my own health, depends on what you mean by checkup. Well, for me, I, I feel like, gosh, it seems like at least once a year or something, I'm having you do some labs and kind of check out where I'm thinking about labs now, and I think it's been less than a year. But with my, some of my cramping, I thought, can you check and see if I'm low and what, there's no way to know other than doing some labs and having that sure. kind of, so no different than the general traditional. Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That that's, that's, and, and for, then I would say just like for me, there's the kind of checkup I would do on you is different than the one I would do on Joe over there. Okay. Great. Oh, sure. Okay. So same with marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Do okay. all marriages need some kind of formal, well, I say, well, I hope that we all already have that because we are talking to our friends. Yeah. And I'm saying, to you. well, but that's always even bringing it down to what if you and Marcy even said, you know, once a year, let's go through a, a, a marriage book together. Okay. Yeah. And just kind of a check in and we may go through it and go, gosh, we're doing pretty good or go, holy smokes. Yep. You don't know unless you check in. You don't know unless and you check in. So we just did that, not formally down that pathway, but we had the budget talk. So about once every year or two, yeah. where's money going? Yeah. You're, I didn't know you were spending money on this. Yeah. I didn't know you're your coffee account has $800 in it. How, <laughs> mine has eight. What's going on here? And you just, okay, well, that is part of the a marriage checkup. Yeah, true. And if there is good communication within a marriage, then, and we're talking about, well, how do you, how do you remember your 16 year old self? What do your parents tell you? Cause we got to tell mutually, we have to tell this kid something about whatever it is that they're doing. And and what about me? And then I think that's part of this mutual submission of marriage that there's a, but 
in in your over here where only the mom is dealing with the kid or only the dad is dealing with the budget or only like that that's a recipe for separateness and and bread not coming together yeah so would they benefit from a coach coming in and saying gosh you guys haven't talked about money yeah. forever i remember todd zeller yeah you know i said gosh that was one of our big marriage successes was to come together and talk about money it, I, the whole spectrum right of little touch points yeah. or vast coaching like we just said about you this morning i wish i could I wish my counselor would just walk around with me all day yeah, long to, yeah, I to help moderate, us talk. To moderate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even there though, you know, I think, and again, it's it's not a 100% anything, but it's interesting as you talk that I think most people, if they're going to have the budget talk, let's say talk about money, probably wouldn't hurt to do it with a Dave Ramsey book. Even if you kind of just brush up and look at some stuff. So it's not just opinion, not whatever. And it's kind of considering a general wisdom yeah. uh, to use as a anchor. Uh, yeah, to some point, moderator, anchor point, anchor, moderator, touch moderator. point of hey, we can agree upon an authority. Yeah. That's what a doctor is. They come to me and they're a little lost or whatever else, and and I use the words. Uh, you, you're you need a different anchor point, a different or why, orientation why we, or true north, a compass. When's the last time you heard of somebody who's at loggerheads with a kid who said, you know what, let's go talk to somebody that can hear us both? Not kid, you need counseling, but let's both go talk. Never, I, right? Like we that. don't do that. Well, as a parent, you that is that is high vulnerability, high, high humility, humility. Just, yeah, yeah. And, but but uh, again, back to business. I have known many business people who have come to. I I knew a couple. You did too uh, years ago. I won't name them. Who had tremendous. I mean, ended up with lawyers. You know, but that's a great time to, man, we're not seeing eye to eye. Let's bring somebody in and, and hopefully a good business is going to do that. They'll pay a high paid consultant to come in and audit, mm -hmm. see what's going on. What are you doing? What am I doing? And especially even relationally, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another form of us. It it's, is. It's, it's still not. These are little micro us. Yeah, they are. Right. Like, and again, the, the mystery of the interestingness of life where you, we humans can even have this with a dog or with a pet or with our house or with our garden or with yeah. nature and, and the, the, the mystery and the miracle of, of this thing we call life that, that is an us that at the end of the day, the foundation is relationship and community within ourselves and without ourselves is life. 